folks, welcome back. I'm not gonna lie to you, today is gonna be a long day, so I'll do my best to keep this bit quick. We are going on a journey, a different kind of journey to what you're used to, but bear with me, because I think you'll enjoy it. But well, I bloody hope so, because it is a long drive. So this is leg one of the journey. Now leg one should be about a three, three and a half hour drive, but I am trying to get out of Kent. I will need to get on the M25, so I'm not gonna hold my breath. Hopefully it won't be too much longer than let's say, let's say four hours. One eternity later. Let's hope this island is peaceful because driving in the southeast has a habit of sucking the fun out of the beginning of any trip. Okay, folks, leg one is complete. We're at a car park somewhere in Paul, which is in Dorset, which is slap bang in the middle of the south coast of England. And for leg two, we need to get on a ferry or a boat or a little tiny ship, I don't know, some kind of sea vessel. Okay, because of the traffic, we have long missed the boat I wanted to get on, so I've got 20 minutes to get to the next boat. So I'm already running about two hours behind, but I've given myself plenty of time. This lot is heavy. I'll explain why I'm taking so much in a bit, but for now, I just want to find the boat and get on it. Brown Sea Island sits in the middle of Pool Harbour. With no bridge or road to get to it, it is only accessible by boat. And after a 15 minute run around the quay carrying 30 kilos, I was glad to take a seat. With the island being so close to the mainland, one of these little yellow boats will get you there in about 20 minutes, the last of which leaves the island at 4.30 p.m. As I was gonna be camping for a few nights, I was looking forward to having this wild island all to myself. So long, farewell, bye-bye. Let's have a toast for the lost old eyes. Leg two is complete, nice easy boat journey, bit windy, bit noisy, but no problem at all. So we're starting leg number three, and this is the leg I've been looking forward to the least, because I'm camping on the island. I've got about a 25 minute walk with all this weight, all the way to where I'm gonna be camping. Because this island is owned by the National Trust, it is very busy uh, during the day. But the last tourist boat off is about four o'clock, 4.30, something like that. So by five o'clock, everyone's gonna be gone. And then hopefully, I'll pretty much have the island all to myself, apart from a few other campers and volunteers and whatnot. And as it's a mecca for wildlife, I am hopefully gonna enjoy it. Whew. Whew. Talking and vlogging of all this kit on's tough. So the reason I've got so much stuff is because of the wildlife that I said about. I've got all my wildlife gear and because you can't get here by car, you literally have to carry on everything you need. I'm going to be here for three nights, so I need quite a lot of stuff. So hence the, uh, the excessive amount of weight. <sighs> it doesn't look hot, but my sunglasses are literally sweating off my face. It's ridiculous. Now there's a more picturesque route that you can take that'll get you to this campground but I've gone for the path of least resistance and I'll show you all that tomorrow because this island, I've been before, this island is really pretty, never stayed on it before but like I say, yeah, I just want to get to this bloody campsite now, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'll see you at the campsite. Oh, peacock, massive peacock. I've got all my wildlife gear and it would be lovely but I'm just going to, fingers crossed, 
we can find the peacocks again tomorrow. Uh, that way, I reckon. That was a challenge. If you do decide to come here to go camping, you don't have to carry all your own stuff. There is like a trailer, so you can chuck all your gear in there when you get off the boat, and then that trailer will bring it up here for you, but it doesn't get here till like five o'clock, and I just want to get set up, get camp set up, and then I'll give you a quick look at where we're staying. Also, there was kind enough to lend me this cool box, which is going to be really handy, because it means I can leave a load of stuff outside the tent, and then I haven't got to worry about how much space I've got. You're coming quite close. You're very close. Well, as if this isn't one of the coolest campsites I've ever stayed at already. I don't know if you can see those, but there's a peacock with three little peacocks, big cock and little cocks, I guess. Um, they are just strolling around the tent. Um, I've just been over to the communal kitchen to make myself a coffee. Uh, you can't bring your own cooking stuff onto the island because it's not allowed, the gas isn't allowed on the boat and there's a fire ban. Obviously you can see how dry it is. I will show you around properly, but I am absolutely shattered. I think I left the house at about 8.30 this morning and it's coming up for six o'clock now. So I'm gonna go for a little wander, get my bearings and then the real adventure will start tomorrow. So I'll see you lot in the morning. Good morning, folks. Uh, can you even see me? Good morning, there you are. Um, so this is one of the communal kitchens I was telling you about, and I promise I will show you around the campsite properly in a bit because the facilities are actually pretty good, but I wanna go and look for red squirrels, so I need to neck a tea and then get going. That was too hot. You couldn't say what we were struggling with. It's one of us, it's obvious, but who's to really blame? Now, I think I've mentioned already that I've actually been to this island before, and it's the first place I ever photographed a red squirrel. Now, this island is the only place in the south of England, aside from the Isle of Wight, where you might catch a glimpse of a red squirrel, and that's because the greys have ruled them out. And because they're islands, the greys can't get on, or if they do, they're much easier to manage, so there's habitat for them. I'm not gonna waste too much time on the red squirrels, though, because I've had a lot of luck this year already, and last year. First of all, in Scotland, in the Galloway Forest, then you say Galway Forest again, and then the next time was on the Isle of Anglesey earlier this year in North Wales. So I'm gonna go and have a quick look, but this island's got a lot more to offer than just wildlife. So we'll see how we do. Is that, is that, is that ducks? You can't come with me. And so it seems I never dreamed that I would figure out that there are things that kind of bring Stop you it. to a screeching That's your mum up there. That's no one's your mum. You, you can't come with apart. me. <laughs> you can't come with me. It will turn out all right. Hey. Mama Duck, Mama Duck, take your children. 
What with the ducks and the peacock earlier, I'd now lost a lot of the morning to birds. Something I wouldn't usually have a problem with if you get what I mean. However, I was looking for something I can't find at my local pond, so I headed into the woods in search of Brown Sea's most famous residence, the squirrels. You go out and get down, and I will find a better you so in time. I will find all the things I'm looking for. With all of my attention on this cute little fella, I completely missed the one right underneath my nose. How cool is that? But with the first day tripper boats arriving and the island filling up, the squirrels headed up to the trees and I headed back to camp. Before I tell you a little bit more about camp, I need to say a huge thank you to AirUp for making this video possible. This is an air up bottle and it turns plain old boring water into something a lot better. All I need is this out of here and then we can make magic. This bottle turns boring water into something much tastier. It does it by adding no additives, no sugars and no anything actually. Instead, it uses this little scent pod and the power of retro nasal smell. You just pop on the pod, pop it up and you're good to go. Oh, I like it. So I am currently using virgin mojito. First time I tried this one, really like it on a summer's day like this, it's perfect. But there are absolutely loads of flavors to choose from. So just head on the website, loads of different fruity flavors, cola, all kinds of stuff on there. Now I'm gonna attempt the science of how this works, but I won't do a great job, but it's fairly simple. Basically when you suck up through the straw, a slipstream is created that transports air and the scent from the pod. And then what happens kind of is it travels up through your nose, that then sends a signal to your brain that you can taste whatever flavor pod you've put on. So I hope that makes sense, but to simplify it, Basically, you know when you walk past a shop and they're selling something really, really smelly and you can taste it as you walk past, it's the same kind of thing. I'm using the big steel bottle. This is new to me and this is perfect for me on trips like this because as you can see, I've put my shorts on, it's got rather warm. This is gonna help keep my drink cool. Now when I'm camping and when we're in the van actually, it's very hard for us. There's no space to carry around lots and lots of soft drinks. So this is just much simpler. That pod's gonna last me for what, five liters of water? So that one pod will probably do this whole little camping trip. And then there's a couple more pods in there. So instead of carrying around lots and lots of bottles of drinks, I've got this, so it can change the flavor. It's brilliant. If you wanna give air up a go yourself, of course there is a link in the description. So head to that link, check it out. Yeah, let me know what you think in your comments. Oh, I love it. And I think Mr. Peacock has arrived. these peacocks are everywhere right then let's have a look around camp so behind me there you've got the ocean and then right there is base camp so this is my humble abode have a quick look in there nothing interesting load of mess don't expect it to get any tidier then just up here we've got the main camp now don't be expecting no two minute tour i ain't running around in this heat uh, behind me there you've got like these tree hammocks now these are really cool you don't have to bring your own tent you can rent out either a tree hammock or like over there a bell tent the bell tents are quite expensive tree hammocks, I think they're two person and three person. And they're really cool because then you ain't got to carry anything and you sleep up off the ground, ideal. And then just behind me there is the camp kitchen. And there's quite a few of these dotted around as well. You saw me make my tea in it earlier. You cannot bring your own cooking. You cannot have an open fire. So you have to use the group kitchen, but I mean, it's fine. I, I think it's great to be honest. There's also some picnic tables dotted around, some open and some like that one up there under cover. And finally, just behind me there is reception. Now it has got a very small shop with a few items that you might need. So it's got a snack bar that's open, you know, in the busy times, it's open today actually. There's toilets, drinking water, washing up sinks, washing sinks, and surprisingly, hot, powerful, excellent showers. So yeah, for a campsite, it's ideal. I can't remember how much it cost me, but I'll put a thing on the screen now with a price for three nights, and that includes my ferry on and off the island as well. So yeah, pretty decent little campsite. In Emily's absence, I do have one fun fact for you about this campsite. To be fair, I met a lovely gentleman and his wife in France who told me this. This was the first ever scout camp, the experimental scout camp. It was done in 1907 and it's been going ever since. So even still now, there's a field over there for guides and scouts to come and use it. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? It kind of started the whole scout movement. Now the island is pretty busy, it's pretty hot. So I'm gonna chill out for a bit until all the people clear off and then go and explore the coastline. Thank you. 
even though this island is jam packed with wildlife, it's not the reason I came. Now I am a wildlife lover and I have got the big lens just in case, but I'm here because this time of year in the UK, everywhere nice will be absolutely ram packed. So any kind of solitude, peace and quiet, gentle camping is going to be difficult. And wildlife photography, you can pretty much forget it in many places this time of year. Having this island all to myself is absolutely amazing. Just wandering around and all I can hear is the bird song is brilliant. Very warm today, so I've got my shorts on. If I switch clothes really quickly, um, it's because I bought a spare set and there are mosquitoes everywhere. And now the tourists are gone, I am their only source of food. So yeah, if I switch clothes, that's why. But here, let's go and have a little look about. The presence of kayaks tells me we are pretty near the beach. And I did read somewhere that you can kayak yourself onto the island and that would be very, very cool. And if I'd had more time, I probably would have looked into it. But yeah, here is the ocean. Definitely has a very desert island kind of feel. I like it. I don't know what it is, but there is something very special about being in a landscape where the forest links directly with the sea. I absolutely love it. I don't know why though, but the whole ground here is some sort of, well, it looks like terracotta pot all like broken down. It's obviously not some sort of round pottery or something. It's all in the wall, all on the ground. No idea, but it's a, it's a bugger to walk on. Oh, camera, camera, ah, careful. That over there, that is another island. It's called Fursey Island or Fursey Island. It's not a remote deserted paradise. Inside of those trees, there's 24 oil wells and it is manned 24 hours. So you can't go over there. So yeah, it's, it's weird. You've got all the nature here and then they're fingering for oil over there. So yeah, definitely interesting though. I've decided to come off the beach. That terracotta pot was doing my head in and I think I'm pretty much at the end now anyway. So I'm gonna head back into the forest. I've had a really good day actually. After I left you earlier, I went down to the calf, got myself a Cornish pasty and some wedges for lunch. Really enjoyed it, was busy, went back to the campsite, chilled out in the peace and quiet all afternoon. And I'm just gonna to attempt to see if I can top it all off uh, with a deer. Now last night when I got my bearings and walked around I did see a few deer but it was very dark and I only had my phone with me so these shots will be terrible. So yeah, so let's see if we can go and uh, go and better that. We found homes in these walls We like what we saw Seems so strong until it falls The fire must fall as I walk the trails of the tiny island, at only one and a half miles long by three quarters of a mile wide, the meandering paths that follow the coast and cut through the forest make it seem much larger. It seems far more wild than many other National Trust properties I've visited before. In fact, being there in complete solitude with nothing but the wildlife and, in parts, rough landscape, it was a real sense of adventure. It was only after leaving the island I found out it was the source of inspiration for one of Enid Blyton's famous five books, and you can see why. Brownsea has a great history. Once being a pirate hideaway and later a millionaire's playground, by the time Enid visited, it was owned by recluse, Mary Bonham Christie. She let the castle and lands run wild, didn't really tolerate visitors and left the place to return to nature, which is probably why in the book it was referred to as Keepaway Island. Luckily, you can now visit again, but was I to be lucky enough to spot my deer? Our house, our dream. We were dancing on wild Safe to say I was happy. Now, remember how I think I'm alone on the island and that because of the mosquitoes, I was likely to change into trousers. Well, I did not knowing that on occasion the National Trust run guided sunset tours. So this is me, unknowingly dropping my pants in front of a group of typical National Trust members. I'm pretty sure they weren't expecting to see this kind of moon on their walk.
Good morning, folks. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Stuck in the caterpillar. Shower. Morning. That's step one complete. I feel half human now. I just need a brew. Step two, and I'll feel completely human. There are squirrels playing on the site. I don't know if you've had to see. Hold on. didn't do a great job with those squirrels, I do apologise. I just grabbed the first camera that I could and the squirrels are very jumpy. There's a pole in my way, the squirrels are very jumpy so they tend to run away so I did my best. Um, I've come to the decision that this morning I'm probably going to leave. There's a couple reasons really. One, the biggest one, the weather is about to turn and they give a lot of rain for today and tomorrow morning and if I can pack up dry I will, I don't want to stay here and just sit around in the rain. Two, it's Saturday, which means this place, in spite of the weather, is going to fill up very quickly. And three, something's come up at home. Um, I don't want to be one of those channels that says, oh, stay tuned to find out what's happening, but something's come up at home. I really do want to get back to start sorting that out. I just don't want to jinx it because it's big. So you will find out soon, but I'm very excited by it. But yeah, like I said, I don't want to jinx it because it might not happen. But if it does, it's very exciting. Ha ha, tea. Tea, tea, tea. As interesting as I'm sure it is for you camping enthusiasts watching me pack up a tent. Like I said, I am trying to beat the rain and I will be taking advantage of the luggage truck on the way back. So I want to get this all packed away as quickly as possible. So I might as well just cut to the bit where I'm shoving the last few bits back in the bag. All done. Let's go. Just, just in time, I reckon. Okay, I've dumped my luggage in the truck that's gonna take it back to the ferry port for me. And like I said, this is the first ever scout camp and I'll just quickly show you this. So these signs, they're all from scout camps that have been and stayed and they can bring their own sign and pop it on there so everyone knows they've been. Sorry, I didn't show you all of the island. There's a little bit left. There's a wildlife uh, nature reserve on the other side, but that is closed at the minute, which is a shame because I would like to have gone and used all their hides. Unfortunately couldn't, I'm sure there's a good reason, but unfortunately couldn't make it. There's some buildings and a church and, and whatnot. But if I show you everything, then you'd have no reason to visit yourself and you really really should and apologies i know this video is lacking in its usual fun facts but feel free to add your own in the comments right all i need to do now is walk back across this island one final time through the forest jump on a ferry that's going to take me across to the mainland stroll my way across the car park and eventually i'll end up back here back at the car park and ready to go home but there is one more thing Ooh, come on, come on. Firstly, if you usually come to this channel for the van life videos and you've stuck around and watched the entirety of this one, then thank you very much. If you're new around here and you've watched the entire video, then thank you very much. And if you just watch all of our videos in general, then thank you very much. It does mean the world. If you like the camping content, I'll stick another one here. This is when I went camping in the woods. It was very scary. It's worth watching. And yeah, that's about it. I'll put a little subscribe thing there and I'll see you all on the next adventure, be it camping or van.